Hi guys and welcome back to Bikes and Laces where this week we're going to be sharing some of our thoughts and comments on the new Strava changes that have come in. First of all if you're new here consider giving us a like and a subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of our new videos. Okay so this week we are going to chat a little bit about some of the changes that have come into Strava and we're also going to be giving you our thoughts and comments on it. Now we're going to be coming at this from two different perspectives. So I have still had the free version of Strava which I've been using and Chris has moved on to the uh, fully subscribed one so we each have a different view and each have different aspects of it. So the first thing that I'm really going to mention and I think this is one of the biggest things that I've noticed has been brought up, is about being able to plot the routes. Now, I really enjoyed plotting all the routes on Strava, and even though you can still use ones that you've previously plotted on there, you can't actually go on and plot a brand new one unless you have become a subscribed member of Strava. Yeah, so Strava Premium, Strava Summit, whatever it was called mm -hmm. before and all, it's quite a few guises over the last couple of years. So it now just means I'm a Strava subscribe member. Now what, this is my first subscription to Strava. Um, previously I've used the free version. Um, and now I'm, I've been subscribed for a week now and I'm just sort of getting to grips with what it all means, how I can use it and, you know, trying to get the most out of my subscription fee. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the the route planning thing. Now that is the main thing I use Strava for because in my cycling club, I'm the rides coordinator. I design most of the routes uh, and put them out through Strava. So for the for so example, for the weekend rides, they're generally all done well in advance and I've already ha got all the rides produced. But every now and again, check the local traffic forecasts, check um, road closures, road work notices. And if there's something on there, change it on Strava, send it out to um, the club so they can have it on their Garmin's, Wahoo's, whatever. So they've got the course with them uh, when we go out for a ride. I was almost forced to pay for Strava Premium just to keep this facility. Uh, I think that's going to be sort of a running theme throughout our um, debate is that a lot of the stuff you're paying for, it was stuff that was previously free. You know, I'm always quite against putting things behind a paywall that were originally free in the consumer version of, say, for this example for the app. If it was a trial, you know, if they put it out as like a, a beta version, mm -hmm. then yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to then pay for something if I was enjoying sort of a, a test version. But as this has been put out, it's been going for years, and now they're putting a lot of stuff behind a paywall. I think they could have gone a better way about it, personally. but. I am enjoying what I've seen so far. Yeah, so I differ to you slightly because I don't need to use the route planning. I don't kind of have any commitments where I would need to use that. But I do find the route planning on Strava a lot easier because that is where, even though I don't necessarily track my runs there, that is where a lot of my recorded runs go to. And then I can kind of just see distances and bits more of that. And being able to take those routes from there and then put them straight on. I know you possibly can go and do it somewhere else and maybe put the files in. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the things I was going to say that I find so weird that it's free on Map My Ride, mm -hmm. on Kamut, programs like that, even just Google Maps. It seems strange to hide that one, as yeah. it were. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that is something I am going to read a bit. I am glad that I can still access the ones that I've had previously, so I've got a variety of different distances I can use, so as long as those don't disappear, I'm fine. Um, but just the fact that I can't find any new ones is just going to make it a little bit more difficult. I'm going to have to put a little bit more work into planning, um, just because it's so easy to pick up the Strava app, have a look at the map, and then know where you are, which I find really handy. So that the first point about the maps. Um, one of the other major things I've seen come out about this has been about the the segments and the segment leaderboards. Now, this is almost Strava's sort of bread and butter yeah. USP, isn't it? These yeah. these these Strava segments. The, the Strava segments. I mean, you get people chasing down Strava segments. Um, 
trying to outbeat one other person just so they can get the top spot and you know having the Strava segments is brilliant. I'm obviously as a freed member I can still see the Strava segments where I am which is really good and I can in essence I can see where I am on the leaderboard now if you're still in like the top 10 then you can see where you are in relation to other people and um, you know what place you are etc and what time people above and below you have so you know how far you've got to go if you're not in that top 10 then you still show up but it's almost like they've redacted some of the information so yeah it's just your position and time isn't it yeah they, and then in comparison to the top 10 they redact your position and although they still have uh, a box above you and a box below you the position time and name of that person are redacted as well so you can still see your time but that doesn't give you any indication of where you sit so across kind of the general board you can see but you couldn't go into any specifics like um maybe this week or something like that or in specific groups so you're a lot more limited for the segments um which is a bit of a shame because there are certain segments where i really like seeing where i sit in relation yeah. and i'm not quite high enough to be in top 10 but it's nice to see what i've got to chase down to go and move and up and let's face it if we're competing on that the leaderboard just through terms of numbers, you're unlikely to be challenging for a top 10, just mm-hmm. in terms of numbers. Out there, it doesn't matter about your, your fitness. The fact is that only the top 10 is in the top 10. You're likely to, going to be somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Uh, depends on how many people you use that segment. You're going to want to beat your mates. Yeah. And if you don't know where they are. Yeah. So, it, it is... A bit of a loss, really. I don't use the segments too much. I use the segments against myself. I like to see myself either equal or above where I was previously. I don't know if that's lost. Um, that, yeah, that is something that you've sort of lost. So you can go and see previous efforts, but in order to really go into the details and be able to scroll up and down the list, you have got to subscribe. So if you've got a particular segment that you've done... 50, 60 times, you're probably only really going to see on the screen maybe a handful of them and you can't do anything with it. So in essence, you can sort of compare your own times. Um, it kind of blocks it out. So in order to be able to go back and click on to... Uh, you can't go back onto the activity, whereas looking at this, I can. Yeah. I can see which of my best one. Click on that activity and see what sort of ride it was. Yeah. Whereas I don't have that ability to be able to click on or go back too far um i can see maybe six or seven so i can see the last six or seven efforts i've done on a particular segment but i can't oh whereas i had the screen anymore or click on i had all all of my efforts on that offer on this one for example it was like 52 times yeah so i suppose if you've just literally wanted to see your effort compared to your last attempt you potentially can um, still see, so I know that the last time I did this segment compared to the time before, I can still see that and I can see the times, yeah. but I just can't really do anything with it. Uh, there may be a possibility they may change this screen. That will be something that I'll I have to keep an eye out. I don't think so, I think that's going to be... For, um, but it does, it kind of limits you, but you can still see a little bit. Okay, so what's the next point you want to cover? Okay, so the next one I want to cover is about the training data now this isn't a huge change because a lot of all the really detailed training data was already behind the paywall yes so this is something i'm just coming to this week yeah whereas because i this is my first time using strava training and i like it um i don't have any issue with it being paid for because it was always part of the premium package mm-hmm. I think we'll just call it premium for what it was because they had that time where it was three different mm-hmm. packages but yeah the, the premium version um, it's good um, I know a lot of people use training peaks which is what you use yeah. um, which I think is a lot better for coached athletes Yeah. this is I mean Strava I think is marketed and built for 
the athlete almost on their own, like completely separate from anyone else. And that's why you've got the, the strata segments who they're their own sort of forms of races. Mm -hmm. You've got um, your ride data, or you, you've got your ride or run data, which I'm surprised you said has actually gone behind a wall as well. Like, I like this, how much you've done in a month compared to last month is two yeah. little lines. I quite like that. Um, I like seeing the massive jumps when I've done the big ride. Um, you said that's gone behind a paywall as well. Yeah, so I tend to go and do a lot of um, monthly distance challenges, in particular virtual yeah. races. And one of the brilliant things was I could always go onto my profile on Strava and see what I'd done in the month, screenshot that, that would go and be sent through as my proof. Now, I know there are a couple of other people out there who do the same as me because they um, posted comments on the various sites and bits that we follow saying pretty much the same thing. So. The fact that I've lost that is, that for me is probably one of the things I'm going to miss the most. There is a way around it. Um, a couple of people have suggested some really clever ideas. If you do do monthly challenges and you need that data from Strava, if you go and join one of the monthly distance challenges, then you kind of get how much you've, like a distance running challenge or distance cycling challenge, then you get that. Um, that is the easiest way to do it. I did have a look on, the web version, so on the laptop. Um, but even if I go in, I can see my monthly data, but it's my overall kilometers. Now that could be my kilometers covered in cycling and running. And if I just need my running kilometers, then I can't break that down um, anymore because everything's behind the paywall. I think the only thing I can see is what distance I've covered in a week. But I don't think I can see that in relation to what I did last week. I think that is literally just what I've covered in the current week that I'm sitting in. Um, so yeah, a lot of the training data was already behind a paywall and I think if you are an athlete who wants to dive into that data and use yeah. that data, then because the majority of it was behind a paywall, you would probably already have that. So that, yeah. to me, isn't a huge I'm, loss. Yeah, I'm not too worried about having all that behind a paywall because to get the most out of it, you have to have bought extras. I mean, from a cycling side, I've always ridden with just the bike and uh, a GPS unit, mm -hmm. a basic one that didn't do heart rate, didn't do power. It just did sort of speed. It was a Garmin Edge 200. So I never tracked my heart rate. I couldn't track power, even if I had a power meter. Um, so the only time it would become useful is actually quite recently when I've been using Zwift, where I've got power. I've got the heart rate monitor set up with Zwift. So pay, I know it's an extra cost to the heart rate monitor, power meter, um, or what, whatever, mm -hmm. for what, what you're doing. Generally, if you've, you've paid for those things, you've probably got money to pay for yeah. Strava Premium. And you know, you don't see it as such a big cost, whereas kids, People starting out, you know, especially in running, where running is seen, almost seen as like the the cheaper sport. I mean, yeah. everyone say cycling is a cheap sport to get into. I want to meet these people because I want to know how they do it so cheaply. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's all relative when it comes to people. So a cyclist who doesn't use a heart rate monitor, doesn't use a power meter, probably isn't that into the training anyway. Yeah. They just ride for the love of it, whereas someone who is a racer looking to move up categories, mm -hmm. looking to do a PB or a time trial course, and they're going to want power, they're going to want heart rate, and they're going to want to dive into it. So they probably don't see those costs as too high for them. I think this is the big thing about it. You can use Strava for the training if you go and pay for it, and you can get some really good data for it. But it just kind of seems that now unless you pay for those subscriptions to get those extra bits it is just a little bit more like a social media site yeah. for run and rides where you post your runs rides whatever and you comment like and that's you, kind of it i think if they'd kept those three bands is it the summit uh, i know summit's yeah, one summit i think i want to say that Isn't there was a safety thing like or something yeah. to do with the if they had kept those three separate and then said you're gonna have to start paying for some of this stuff i think people would be 
more happier than they are now because you can sort of pick and choose which bits you want mm -hmm. to pay for. Whereas this, it's you pay for all of it, you use all of it, you use some of it, you use none of it, yeah. same price. Um, and the fact that it actually eats into some of the free, originally free stuff, mm -hmm. um, I think that's where a lot of people have sort of got the hump with it really. So obviously um, a lot of things have gone behind the paywall, a lot of things have stayed behind the paywall as well, so the uh, safety feature that Strava offers, Beacon, um, that still something you have to that's the tr the, yeah, uh, that's two nominated that, people can track you or trace you or whatever yeah, that's like that. something that was always paid for and it's still paid for um so that's not changed usually which isn't too I'd, I'd like to see one of them for free and then any extra people you wanted to add on that would be a quest yeah that makes sense but the fact that i mean that probably is one of the more expensive things to run i know they said they're expensive most expensive thing to run was the the segments mm -hmm. which surprised me i, I i'm not totally okay with how their system works but it seems like once you sort of set it up it should sort of run itself mm -hmm. um, I'd have thought Roots was probably the main cost but because things like Map My Ryan Commute are free I don't know why they would want to put that behind the paywall so we've mentioned this paywall several times mm -hmm. what is how high is this wall? Okay so um I am on a lot of different Facebook groups and Strava has obviously, with everything that came in, it has just, has just hit the communication side of things. Um, it is, seems to be in all the groups I'm part of. And one of the really big things that I see coming out is just pay for it, it's only £4 a month. Now, yes. now this is the one I'm on, yes. which is the one-off annual payment of £48. Yeah, so that's great if you can pay off that one-off payment then that's absolutely brilliant but there are people out there who can't make that payment so maybe the only way they could do it is in smaller amounts so if you do have to pay it monthly then it works out at £6.99 and by the time you've paid that off for a year you're actually paying about £83.88 so that's well I like the, idea, I like the idea that the, the monthly one is cheaper than paying I like the idea that the annual payment is works out in the long run cheaper than the monthly yeah. payment. I think that's pretty really standard in memberships. You know, you get yeah. to pay up front. Is that that? It works out. The fact that I would say is that is this training worth four pounds a month? Definitely. Is it worth seven? I wouldn't pay seven pounds a month mm -hmm. for it. I know it's a, it's only an extra three pounds a month. What's that? Uh, that's not even coffee and cake. That might be a large coffee. Yeah. A month. That's with a, with so many things now becoming subscriptions. You got Netflix, you got Amazon Prime, you've got like, virtually almost every TV station has now got their own app where you can pay for a bit a month. I mean, I, I tend to quantify how expensive something is by comparing it to a Netflix subscription, which yeah. I don't pay for. No. <laughs> But something like Amazon Prime, I think Amazon Prime is about £80 a year. Yeah. That's, I mean, I get next day delivery, usually. Amazon Prime mm -hmm. on my phone and on TV, to Xbox, whatever, I can watch, download stuff. That's mm -hmm. a lot more value into that. And I think we're lucky to be able to afford to pay for things like that. Yeah. Um, well, having to think, oh god, I've got to save here, save there, mm -hmm. something. But the fact that it's near, I mean, it's only £3 extra. It is nearly twice as more, though. Yeah, and that... And I, 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 I don't see I don't see £7 a month worth of value in this. Is that how much Netflix is? Uh, £8.99 per month. Okay. okay, so it's a pound cheaper a month than Netflix. Yeah. Is... From what I've seen of Strava so far, it's not £12 a year less than Netflix in terms of worth, if you know what I mean. Netflix. I think, I think I get what you're getting at. The, the, the fact is, I know that uh, with an interview with one of the owners of Strava, they said they don't actually make, they haven't actually made money of it, on it yet. I don't see the problem with keeping it free, selling advertising space. You know, they 
they've shown that they don't really care about the feed when they said it can go in any order you want they don't care about date I know they have fixed it you can go back to change it into time order but like there's adverts on here for the challenges yeah. uh, suggested athletes you know friends of friends and whatever I'd be much happier to scroll through here and see an advert that's t targeted on Shrabby. They're not going to be selling pots and pans and stuff like that at homeware goods. They're going to be selling cycling kit, running shoes, fitness stuff. I would much rather see that than an out of order Strava feed with, you know, monthly challenges coming up because that really doesn't appeal to me. Whereas, okay, there's a lot of things like selling data and stuff like that. I'd be happy for them to sell my Strava data to someone who wants to advertise something based for me. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather have a cheaper or free Strava account with adverts plastered every two or three activities than pay, how much was it, £83 a year yeah. for an athlete's Facebook page. Pretty much that, that does sum up what Strava is as a free user it is um, pretty much a social media page for yeah. athletes yeah and I mean when we used to do club rides and hopefully we can get back to them soon get back, everyone put the ride up at the same time, you know we all get back from the shop at the same time click on it, give it a shake, kudos everyone yeah. that's all it'll be for and if you wanted to pay for training Fair play to you if you ask what you want to use it for, but I don't see seven pounds a month in it. Like I said, I do see four. If you want to pay that much, yeah. I but I can only see that going up. I can't see that sticking around that price for too long. I reckon my next one, next year, it'll be at least five pounds a month. It'll That's probably big. be what's that fifty? No, that'll be sixty pounds. That will definitely be something to watch and um, keep an eye on. Yeah, um, as far as I've seen, I don't think Strava needed to make any changes to itself. Um, I know they said they were running at a loss or they weren't making profit, mm -hmm. but hey, they've been running for that long. Yeah. They must obviously have some credits somewhere. So those are the main changes that we've seen. Um, that have certainly been chatted about more on the various social media sites. There are a couple of other really good things that I've seen. Um, I haven't seen the outcomes of them directly, but I've read about them um, and they are going to be really good. So one of the first really good things is they've adjusted the effort detection to improve it. So KOMs, course records and QOMs um, that were gained under false methods are now picked up a lot easier so if, so that i forgot to turn off my garmin when i put it in the car yeah that kind of scenario or someone who's gone out and done um a run segment on a bicycle or even a bike segment on something else Ooh. it means then that so that mean i mean i know you're supposed to do the strava things by the segments by yourself that means if you're drafting in a group for say you're being led out for a se segment that you want they could pick that up um Potentially. Because obviously your power would be much less, much less huge, depending on if they want to... Yeah. I think it definitely means any segments, like the one um, we looked at for myself uh, from one of my previous runs. The majority of the, the pacing one, the, for that The one run, who did it twice as quick as second place. Yeah, so yeah. The, the, the pacing for those two kilometres, the majority of people did it about nine minutes or more. There was one person who did it in four minutes or that's that's two minutes a kilometre so that definitely wasn't running. So things like that I reckon will be picked up easier and people who are maybe pushed down the leaderboard or even off the leaderboard meaning they can't see where they are in comparison might be able to reclaim their spot. So that I think is a really good thing to come up but like you say there's that potential that if you are being led in a group ride it may also be picked up. So those are free? 
Okay. Yeah, these these are still free. These aren't things I have to. I think these this are just about the functionality. Yeah, right? these are just things that Strava seem to have updated to kind of keep things running smoothly. Is there anything else? Um, yeah, so actually it was really interesting you saying about the, uh, I left my Garmin on while I was in the car because they have added mobile activity cropping. So if you've been out for a run or you've been out for a ride and you jump back in your car, head home and you actually haven't turned your Strava off, you've then got however many kilometres where you were in the car, you can actually now go and crop that back to wherever you need to the end of the thing. Um, you know, which is ideal. There's been more than one occasion where I've got to the end of the park run Walked half the way home just to realise I hadn't actually stopped my Strava segment or my Strava run. Um, so being able to crop that is going to be quite nice. It means you can get a more accurate picture of your overall pace yeah. and your overall Yeah, I was work. just thinking it'd, it'd be good for races as well when, especially in bike races, you're, if there's a sprint and you stop your Strava on the line, you know, cause a bit of a pile up. Yeah. So, you know, that bit where you go past. And then come back. I like that. That's quite a good idea. Yes. I wonder if you're gonna, we're going to see and what other improvements we're going to see on Strava. Now that they're, they're obviously trying to get more people to pay for it, raise it, raise some more money. I wonder if we're going to see it, that then put back into the product. I don't know if there's anything I want actually changing to Strava. It it should be a very simple platform. Like it should be. An athlete's Facebook. Mm -hmm. The training thing, are they going to tr try and compete with training peaks or other programs such like that? I don't know and I don't think they need to. I think they need to realise what they are and just be good at what they do and maybe they could have just, I would like to know how much it would be if they just put the price of a training, you know, what's that elasticity of demand there where they can put the price up to what ever level before too many people say no this is too expensive mm -hmm. and leaves there's actually losing more money than when they had more people at a lower price entry I think it's not the fact that the stuff that you get for free feel like half a product it's the fact that it was originally free I think is the problem I have with it yeah that seems to be the the general um, the general view that's put across it's not that there isn't as much free stuff, it is the fact that the things that we enjoyed that were free, we now no longer have access to. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're an athlete who wants to focus on that training, you would have had that anyway, or something similar. Yeah. So that's not really going to be a huge bother yeah. for those who I are, think who there, are, there who could have been a better way to raise this money it does see I can see where they're coming from especially seeing that in, watching that interview on GCN with one of the heads of Strava I can see where they're coming from I just wish there was a less for want of a better word a less dickish way of going about it basically the stuff you liked you now have to pay for I'd like to have seen maybe you know instead of charging people for something that they already get for free, maybe think of some sort of a better operating model, a better company operating model, rather than just shipping costs on to consumers. Well, I think I'm definitely going to be kind of keeping an eye just to see if any more changes do come about. And it will be interesting to keep up to date with people's thoughts on it um, and how people react to it. If you have any thoughts on it, or if you were a member and you've decided not to stick with being a member, or you previously were free and you've decided to now go and subscribe, then drop us a comment below and let us know, because we want to hear your thoughts as well. Um, yeah, and let us know if you think we missed anything on the Strava debate that maybe we should have covered. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you want to see another one of our debates, we discuss medals at races and events mm -hmm. click here and to subscribe click here